Streaming live, tackling the topics everyone's talking about online. Share, engage, interact. This is Newsfeed Now. It is finally Friday. We have got the biggest show in our history in just five minutes. We have got a gold medal Olympian live on Newsfeed Now. She's a member of the Fierce Five. Jordan Weber joins us. We're also going live to Nashville, Tennessee, where 200,000 people flooded the streets last night for the NFL draft. We're also throwing fish, and we've got a 97-year-old beauty queen who's also an artist. She'll be on the show live. That's a story that will inspire your weekend. But we start in the ring. Mixed martial arts, one of the fastest growing sports. It mixes boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, kung fu, karate, taekwondo. It's really got it all here in the South. There's one name that's quickly rising, a name that's as unique as its namesake. Bryce Mitchell goes by Thug Nasty. I was terrible at every other sport, so I quit doing basketball and football and soccer and all that, and I just started going full on MMA. My buddy, he started calling me Thug Nasty when I was just in my first fight. And uh, for me, it was something that was funny. And since they gave me the name, you know, I wasn't going to fight it. So I just kind of took the name that was, was given to me. And I uh, just kind of ran with it. And people have tried to get me to change my fight name. because they don't like it or whatever, I think it's great. And it was the first thing that people start calling me, so it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, I like it. <laughs> All right, the man, the myth, the legend, Thug Nasty, Bryce Mitchell joins us now live from his college, Harding University. All right, Bryce, I knew this. Tell the people watching here across 20 different <coughs> cities, why are you going to school right now? What is your field of study? I do economics. I just had to do some homework, so I had to get there a little bit early. I kind of waited to the last minute, so I had to kind of rush and get that homework done this morning. <laughs> All right, that's good to know. You're a senior uh, there at Harding, but you're still waiting to the last minute. Uh, is it difficult to juggle going to school and being an up-and-coming MMA star? Yes, sir, it is. But I mean, I try to do the best I can at it. Right after this, I'm heading straight to the gym. I'm going to work out a little bit and uh, hold some pads for a buddy. All right, so you're 11-0 and in the UFC. Uh, if people don't know about your fighting skills, they at least need to know about what happens in the ring. So, Bryce, hang tight. Let's show you everybody at home what happened <laughs> when Bryce was in the ring. Tim, we're going to go over here to camera or uh, uh, computer one. Peppa, call my mama and tell her I'm fine. And tell her to be hungry when she picks me up. I'm taking her out for steak. I want to thank Arkansas. Everybody back home, remember, you're my inspiration. I ain't supposed to be here because I'm from Arkansas. Arkansas ain't worth the piss. They told me I have to leave Arkansas and be worth something. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. And Reebok, I told you I want some camo shorts. All right, Bryce, first thing, did you get any camo shorts? Uh, they're working on it, okay. man. They don't really know what camo is. I'm kind of kind of trying to, to help them come up with some realistic camo. They sent me some tie-dye looking stuff and I was like, eh, you know, but they're working on it. All right, so I, I, I want to know, you just won that fight. It was a big money fight. Uh, what was it, about a $50,000 purse, is that right? Yes, sir, that was the bonus. Yes, all right, sir. so you got a $50,000 bonus. You're hot, you're sweaty, you've done all the grappling, you've done all the boxing. How does that emotion just all of a sudden pour out of you when you start saying, Papa, I need a steak? <laughs> Man, I'd, I'd had all that anger saved up in me for months. I've been wanting to say that exactly, you know, for a while. And, uh, yeah, I, I really want to fight in camo shorts, so I've been thinking about that. It's been on my mind. But I knew I was going to say that if I won. And if they don't have them for my next fight, I'm going to say the same thing if I win. <laughs> Well, if you win, I've been in the gym with you. You're one of the hardest workers I've ever seen uh, in a gym before. What, what's, what is next for you? Obviously, right now you're grinding. Uh, you're still training. You're going to school. Uh, you're trying to be a, you know, this economics numbers guy. But you also got to have your eye on the prize for the next time you get in the octagon. Right. It's probably going to be five or six months. And um, the reason is because I'm competing a lot against a lot of older fellas. I've never fought anybody younger than me. 
to my knowledge, it's always been older people. And so uh, with that age comes a little bit of strength. I'm trying to put on some strength, some weight, some size. And then uh, my next fight, I think I'll be ready. But that seemed to be my, my biggest problem in my last fight. The guy felt a lot stronger than me. So I'm just going to lift a lot of weights. All right, before you go, Bryce, has this fame changed you? Have you bought a new car? Have you, have you bought some more land? Have you changed from the same old Bryce that grew up in the middle of Arkansas? <laughs> No, sir. Same trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so you're yeah, living in a trailer right now, and if you search right now on YouTube, uh, you can find a lot of interesting stuff. You also are a big puppy fan. You like puppies. I love dogs, man. That's Yep, love them. All right. Well, Bryce Mitchell, we thank you so much. We appreciate that. Give him a follow. Thug Nasty. You keeping the name, right? Oh, definitely, man. They try to get me to change it. It ain't going nowhere. Thank y'all so much for having me. I appreciate you, my brother. You You're always it. welcome in the gym, too, man. All right. I'm going I'm to come spar with you one day. Never going to happen. <laughs> but I'm going to do it. <laughs> Bryce Mitchell, Thug Nasty. Thank you so much. Give him a follow uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Let's move on. See you, brother. Let's keep the history going. Another big interview now. For the first time, a gold medal Olympian is now a collegiate coach. Jordan Weber won a gold in the London Summer Games in 2012. Now at just 23 years old, she is taking over the gym gymnastics program at the University of Arkansas. It's hard not to remember what Weber and her teammates were able to do in London. You remember that? Taking the imagination of all Americans, grabbing a gold medal. She's a graduate of UCLA. She was a volunteer assistant. Now she's making the move to the South. Well, I look at my past experiences in this sport, I'm, I, I've seen it all in the club level, in the elite level, and now at the college level, and I feel that um, that experience has equipped me for this, and I don't see age as a factor personally, and I'm excited to show everyone that, you know, although I'm 23, I'm prepared for this, and I'm excited, and I'm, I'm ready to lead these women. All right, we're coming to you. All right, Jordan now, live from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Jordan, I can't call you Jordan anymore. It's coach now. <laughs> That's right. Tell me about the experience uh, going from UCLA here to the South. There's something different in the South. I know my friends who are watching from Kansas right now may disagree, but I think the SEC, top to bottom, is the toughest conference in the land. How are you now going to compete with our friends watching down in Louisiana, the LSUs, who were just the runner-up to the Collegiate National yeah. Championship? I mean, that was one of the things that attracted me about Arkansas is that it is in the SEC. It's one of the most competitive conferences out there, and that really excites me. I am a very competitive person, and I can't wait to get this team to the next level, keep building on what we already have so we can compete with the teams like, the, like LSU. All right, so you, you made this move to the South. What did you expect when you flew in to Arkansas from UCLA, sunny L.A., everybody knows what Southern Cal is like, to the Ozark Hills? of the southern U.S.? I didn't really know what to expect, but actually I was very pleasantly surprised. I absolutely love Fayetteville. It is, I can tell, a very special place with a lot of really great people. And the one thing I love about it is that everyone in the whole state of Arkansas is a Razorback fan. Yeah, and I right. can't wait to be a part of that. All right, so moving forward, what are you wanting to incorporate? Again, we just heard from you when you were announced yesterday. 23 years old, maybe some will say, she's too young to be a college coach. How are you going to relate to these players? I think the fact that I am young actually helps me with relating to these girls. I've been through so much in my own gymnastics career, even as a coach. So a lot of the challenges that these girls are going to face, I've been through the same challenges, and I can speak to those challenges. I'm excited to, to mentor them through those things, and, and I've, I've been at the highest level of competition. I know how to compete successfully under huge amounts of pressure and that's something that I want to carry carry on and teach our, our team here at Arkansas. What are you going to tell those college athletes when you go into their homes, you know, whether it's Texas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, about what they can expect being in the gym with you? I think I want to tell them that, you know, first of all, like I said, Arkansas is a very special place. Once you get on this campus, you can feel the magic. You can feel the support of everyone. And athletics is such a big deal here. And that's one of the things I love about it. And I think once people step foot on this campus, they're going to realize that same thing. And for me, you know, as a coach, 
I'm, I'm tough, but I'm also very supportive, and I can't wait to, to get in the gym and work with these girls and show them you know, my coaching style. And, and I know that every single athlete needs to be coached differently, and they all have their different styles of being motivated, and I can't wait to figure all that out and, and coach them the best way that I can. All right, it's going to be hard to do. I, I've been to two Olympic Games. I've been to the last two Olympic Games covering that for uh, our company. 2012 was a big year for you. Rank mm -hmm. that now going from a gold medal in 2012 now, 2019, being a college coach and having a program that you get to run. You know, it's, it's hard to compare the two, sure. but I just look back on every experience I've had with the sport of gymnastics. It has opened so many doors for me. It has taught me so many incredible life lessons mm -hmm. that I'm now using as a coach. And that's a pretty incredible thing, and that's what these girls are going to realize when they're done with their four years in college. Where's the medal at? It's in a secret hiding place. Okay. I don't reveal that information. <laughs> uh, before you go, how long did it take you to learn the Woo Pig Suey that all Arkansas Razorback fans, coaches, and players know? <laughs> I was very excited to learn the, the hog call. I learned it on the plane ride from L.A. to Fayetteville <laughs> the other day. Two of the athletes came on the plane ride, and I said, the first thing I need to do is learn the hog call. Absolutely. And I understand it's very, very important to, to do it correctly. And so now I'm fully aware, and I know how to do it, and I'm very excited. I will say, uh, I watched your press conference. Again, I grew up an Arkansas Razorback fan. I know we cover a lot of different uh, universities here on Newsfeed now. But it's in the fingers. you got to wiggle the fingers. If you don't wiggle the fingers, you ain't doing it right. That's what I hear. All right, Jordan Weaver, thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time here on Newsfeed Town. We appreciate it, and congratulations to you. Thank you. Thanks right. for having me. Have a good one. The rain came down, and the college players became pros. Round one of the NFL draft is in the books. I actually watched a couple of different stations, and everybody was talking about the city more than the football. Nashville made this business gathering a party among friends. Let's take a look at the sights and sounds. It's loving crazy. It. It. I've never seen so many people. It's amazing. We love this. It's all about this NFL football. With the 18th pick in the 2019 draft, the Minnesota Vikings select quarterback two. Draft. The NFL draft. Oakland Raider football, baby! Three first round picks. If you're not out here, you should be out here. And I'm here because a friend of mine invited me over. He had no idea it was draft week. And this is crazy. I'm I'm in the time of my life. It's crazy. I would have never in my life dreamed I would be here. Oh, I got the horses in the bag. Horse stock is inside. is mad at black. Got the horses. <laughs> They were dancing in the streets there of Nashville. Let's bring in Bray Teeley. Now, Bray, you've been covering this event and, and, and watching that coverage. Everything that you've told us on Newsfeed now came true. Nashville was ready and every national sports pundit was talking about what your city did last night. Nashville over delivered. It the city sparkled. It was on fire. It was a sea of rainbow jerseys downtown. Everybody was friendly. Everybody just brought together by their love of football, their love of college football, pro football. It was fantastic. And guess what? We're, we're ready for round two. We are about to uh, kick off day two here of the NFL draft. Aaron, we just got an official confirmation, official number for the amount of people who turned out yesterday. 200,000 people Ooh. in one day filled downtown. Ooh. That's double than what we were originally mm. thinking was going to come out. So I can't even imagine what today is going to be like because it's a Friday and Music City likes long weekends. They like to start their Fridays early, so it's going to get going. Bri, it doesn't look like up. you have rain either, and there was a lot of rain last night. Uh, but I want to talk about something else that happened yesterday in Nashville. It was maybe not the return, but Taylor Swift showed up once again. Oh. Taylor almost stole the show, okay? She is such a big deal. We talked about her a couple weeks ago. Hey, she just shows up, pops up somewhere in Nashville, and it brought out a crowd of hundreds of people. Like we said, she's so gracious with her fans. She took about an hour and a half and just took pictures with them and um, made videos with them. And she was basically uh, released her brand new single, her new song, Me, uh, which is incredible. Already has like over 20 million views on YouTube. It's just Taylor being Taylor, you know? Did you get a chance to go out there and at least take a picture with the butterfly wings or uh, was that just left up to uh, 
the real fans? Oh, I must say, I'm quite embarrassed, Aaron. I live in that neighborhood, in the Gulch, and we have beautiful murals, murals that pop up like that all the time in the Gulch, I must say. I mean, they're a beautiful pair of angel wings like that. It's just, it's a very artistic town. So I did not take the time to take a picture by those wings, and now I'm majorly regretting it. But, you know, it's all over the place on Instagram. Yeah. Well, Bree, I would, I would hope you would go do that today. At least say, here's where Taylor was. Yes. All right. Good Bree, idea. thank you so much. Day two of exactly. the NFL draft is today. Day three will be on Saturday. Bree, we appreciate it. Real quickly, if y'all want to hear a little bit of the new song, Me, from Taylor Swift, here it is. All right, that's it. That's all I'm going to give you. Seven seconds. That's it. That's all I can legally give you. From Nashville down to the Gulf of Mexico, it's time to pick up some fish and toss them as far as you can. If you never heard about mullet tossing on the Florida-Alabama line, you're missing one heck of a party. It's at the legendary Florida-Bama bar. Let's go to Bryant Kirkley right now who is on the beach. Bryant, my goodness, you've got a, you've got a tough job today, don't you? Yeah, here I am on the beach right now, and there are plenty of people. I'm just going to turn the camera over for you guys, and you can see this is the mullet toss competition. Now, uh, there's kids in line that will be uh, starting um, at 10 a.m. is the kids' round, and then at noon, the adults uh, are going to get going. And basically, you toss the mullet. This is the Alabama side right now, and then that is Florida as far No, no. This is Florida. I'm sorry. This is Florida. And that is now, 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 Brian. Brian, you're already confusing <laughs> the sorry, states. You already had a little. Uh, I'm messing my geography up. Man. Are, no, no, well, no, I'm, no, I'm worried right now that you're indulging in this party a little bit too much. No, I understand man. <laughs> now. You need to be hydrated, but go with milk, Brian. It's milk, okay? Or water. Or water, oh, or water yeah. You can water. In, I can assure you that I'm in Florida right now. And okay. they are tossing that mullet all the way over um, to Alabama. And uh, the goal is to see whoever can get the mullet the farthest. Now, this event raises around $40,000 each year for local charities uh, in the area, drug and alcohol charities and other types of charities. And they are expecting thousands of people here at the Floribama, a world-famous bar here in uh on the border of Florida and Alabama, right out next to the Gulf of Mexico. They're expecting thousands of people here today. And we're just about to get started, actually. Well, Brian, I got to tell you a true story about my one time in the Floribama bar. Uh, I actually did not have anything to drink when I went into that bar. I just walked in. I had my kid with me, so, uh, but it, it's oh, a different well, place down there. Sense. Have you ever tossed one of those little fishes? I have, I have not, actually. I have not ever done it before. Are you, well, I haven't had the chance. Where are they? Let's see them. Go grab one. Throw them across the border. Well, I don't, I don't know if I can do I'm that I'm going to tell now. you you can break the rules, Bryant. Ask for forgiveness, <laughs> not permission. Well, maybe I can show you guys a little bit of what I'm talking about. Hold on a second. Okay, all right, I, I will hold on for this. Okay. Fish being tossed hey, in sir, the air, I'll I, hold I'm on. on Newsfeed now. Can I see what we got going? Uh, sure. All right, guys. So, Stick your I, hand in there, Brian. Gra oh, on, come on. Go go after it now. Oh, They're kicking you. <laughs> All right, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys. So, uh, uh. so this is, oh, my gosh. So this is what we got here. Um, so now I'm going to have to wash my hands before my live shot. Good morning, Florabama. But, uh... <laughs> And as you guys can see, we're starting now, and I, I gotta. Okay. Here. You know what I'm saying? I'm in and in my live shot today, so I gotta. Brian's wash gotta my go. First. I made yeah, him uncomfortable by picking up a dead fish, and now he's gotta go. There Brian, thank you so much, man. We appreciate you taking the time. Oh, that was hilarious. Did you see how hesitant he was to stick his hand in there just to grab a fish? Brian, thanks, buddy. Have fun. We appreciate it. All right, that was good, but this is better. Let's wrap up the show with a story that will get you in the feels. It is our Finally Friday Feels Story of the Week. You know, age is nothing but a number, right? You only act as old as you feel. Plus, beauty ages like fine wine. All of these are true if your name is Jessie Pittman. The 97-year-old was named Arkansas State Queen. She claimed the crown during the Arkansas Healthcare Association pageant. I told everybody I'd lose it, you know, and uh, so the next thing I knew, I had some pretty flowers in my room, in my hands, and something went on my head, 
And guess what it was? <laughs> okay, I am going to go away from the video because now Miss Jessie joins us live. How are you this afternoon? Tell him how you are, Jesse. What did he say? He asked, how are you? Well, I'm as well as I can be. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, uh, get along as good as I can, and I guess I'm doing all right. Well, you look beautiful. Tell me about the feeling that you had when you got the crown on your head. Tell him how you felt when they put that crown on your head. Well, we went, we went in one at a time, and they had chairs up there for each one. And I was sitting next to the first one that went in. <coughs> and uh, they brought uh, the uh, bouquet of flowers and laid in her, in her arm. And I said, oh, Jesse, you just as well to give up. You're not going to do, do anything at all. And they brought me one and put it in my arms. And now all of a sudden, I heard them, I felt them putting my um, uh, top on my head. And I said, oh, oh there it is, Jesse. Now, Miss Jesse, <laughs> do so you sleep in that crown? <laughs> What's that? Do you, do sleep, you sleep in the crown? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she loves it. That is fantastic. Yeah. Miss Jessie, before you go, you're also an artist and you've done a lot of artwork. What inspires you to do some of the art that you do? To, to paint? Yeah. Well, I don't know what... Well, I, I guess I started from the very beginning because I remember when I was a little kid, uh, a girl, I mean, uh, I, I was want enough to... Uh, uh, I, I, I had started the school, mm -hmm. and I came home with to, with Mama to a bird that I had painted, and and uh, she had put it up on the wall. But then I didn't have any time, and you know, was and so these uh, I got started with uh, painting uh, with some girls that I knew, and, and we worked together. And, uh, well, I've seen some of your work, Miss Jesse. It's beautiful work. Uh, and some of it, I uh, just thought it up myself mm -hmm. and painted it when I wanted it. And uh, other times, I have seen it. You know, yeah. We came through the Blue Ridge Mountains, and I saw the the building, and then that big wheel that took the water around. Oh, well, I went home and I made me one, and you're talking about it, I, uh, everybody seemed to want one, and I made a lot of them. So you did it. That is fantastic. <laughs> Miss Jesse. we've got to go, but thank you so much. We appreciate it, and I'll tell you what, you are as pretty as a picture today. Well, so can you wave at him? Your, give him your wave. Oh, we've yeah, got a wave. we got to hear, see the pageant wave. Go for it. Show him your wave. Oh, yeah. Fine. Do this. Yeah, awesome. right there. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you taking the time. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye, guys. What a great way to end the show. What a big show this was. Thank you so much for joining us for Newsfeed. Now we're going to post these different segments so you can enjoy them and show your friends as well. Have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy it outside here around the South. It's going to be a pretty one, I hope. See you next time. Bye. Go.